The first experiment is going to be determining Avogadro's number. As we all know, Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And to determine this, we need to find the number of molecules divided by the number of moles inside a monolayer. And what is a monolayer? It's a good question you ask. Um, simply put, we're trying to form one layer of steric acid in this experiment. To demonstrate what a monolayer is, I have a pack of chalk here. If you can see the arrangement of the chalk, we have one nice layer. The moment I begin to take this chalk and begin to stack on top of it, you see that I break the monolayer. So in this experiment, we're going to try as much as possible to form one complete layer of the steric acid. And to do this, we're going to have to make some assumptions to determine the number of molecules in the layer. And I believe if you refer to your packets in page two, figure one, you see a nice description of what we're trying to form here. Lastly, guys, be sure to read your lab packet, take the readiness test, and see your teacher if you have any questions. Good luck. All right, guys, we're gonna go through the supplies now. Before I begin, if you refer to page three in your packets, you will have a detailed list of all the supplies. But this is for visualization purposes. I want you guys to actually see the see the supplies beforehand. So what we're going to use in this experiment, we're going to use a ruler. This is just a basic standard ruler. This is for measuring the diameter of the watch glass and the weight we're going to measure, not just in this experiment, but for all experiments to come, we're going to be measuring the two decimal places because we want to have a more accurate measurement. So let's say, example, you measure the diameter of the watch glass and it is about 3.5 we want to be exact, so we'll say 3.50. The first number is the accurate number, but the second is an estimate. That's what we want. Secondly, we have a plastic pipette. This you'll be using when you are making the drops of the solution. We have a rubber stopper in front of us, and this is for stopping the test tube. Now remember, in this test tube, we're gonna have our hexane solution. And note that once the solution is in the test tube, quickly put the stopper in there, make sure that it's properly secured. We do not want to lose any of the hexane in the evaporation because if that happens, the concentration will be affected and we do not want to have any skew in our data. And lastly, we have the wash bottles. This is simply to put distilled water in there. If you read your packets, you know. And then lastly, we have the watch glass, which is currently being cleansed in sodium hydroxide right now and if you see the way she's holding the watch glass she's making she's not touching it by the center she's holding it by the edges and this is simply because we do not want any contamination of the watch glass note that she has the rubber the gloves beforehand I would advise wearing the gloves beforehand you touch the glass so that any grease on your hand does not contaminate it. Again, we're trying to form the monolayer, so make note that we don't want any contamination, anything to affect our data. And lastly, we're gonna proceed to safety procedures and other things you might need to know right now. Okay, we're gonna go through uh, some quick basic safety procedures. Note always in the lab to wear goggles. As you see me here, this is a must, never take your goggles off. Rubber gloves are a must also. Again, this is just simply not to contaminate anything. Now, moving on to the chemicals we're gonna use. In this experiment, we have our steric acid. Make sure to note the concentration. Concentrations are always gonna be written on the bottle. Make sure to have this in your lab notebook. Remember, this is what we're gonna be using to form the monolayer. We have the hexane solution. This will be used to measure the volume of one drop, which you will do at the end of your testing. And then lastly, we have this brown jar in front of me. This is labeled chemical dispose. This is where you put all waste materials, never dump in the sink. This is where everything goes. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the procedure, which is in the third page of your lab packets. So what we're gonna do, your first step is gonna be to fill the wash bottle with distilled water and also get one of the wash glasses wearing your rubber gloves and place it on top of a beaker so you can see the monolayer forming. You're also gonna want to um, fill the test tube with about three to four milliliters of the steric acid in the hexane solution and make sure you stop it immediately. Um, you will then fill the wash glass with the distilled water up to the brim. And then you are going to take your plastic pipette 
put it into the stearic acid solution in the hexane and make sure you're holding it vertically over the wash glass and applying consistent pressure and add drop by drop the stearic acid solution making sure that you're recording the number of drops and remember this is a slow process and usually takes about 5 to 12 drops and you're just going to wait and wash the hexane slowly to uh, form the monolayer. Eventually, as you're adding the drops, they're going to start to spread slower and slower. And then, you know you've hit the ending point when you drop one drop on the surface and it stays at the top like a contact lens on the top of the water. You can see the solution in a circle on the top of the water. Now just make sure that you repeat your process until your results agree between one to two drops for accuracy. Now we're going to take our hexane solution to calibrate the volume of one single drop of solution. And as you can see, you, once again, drop by drop into the graduated cylinder to see how many drops it takes to form one milliliter. And this is important because we're going to use this data to calculate the volume of the monolayer. So as you can see, drop by drop, keep track of the number of drops. And when you're done, you repeat again, try and get consistent data, try and get within at least one to two drops each time. So in conclusion, we're going to go over the measurements that you need to have recorded in your lab notebook. First is the number of drops to form the monolayer. Second is the volume of one drop, which through a calculation you can determine the volume of the monolayer. Third is the concentrations of the chemicals, which can be found on the bottles. And fourth, the diameter of the watch glass. Now with all of these measurements, you need to make sure that you have the proper units and significant figures because they're going to change experiment to experiment. Lastly, guys, be sure to read the lab packet before you come to class. Make sure to take the readiness test. Any questions you have, see your teacher. It's a fun lab. Good luck. Enjoy it.